Hello, I'm Sean from BookSource, the company that created BookSource Classroom. I'll be your guide through a series of videos to help you better understand BookSource Classroom and its many features. And today we're going to do a quick overview of BookSource Classroom and kind of all the different tools it has. I'm not going to go into deep information about it because we have many, many, many other videos on this channel that are going to detail each and every section of BookSource Classroom, but this should give you a general idea. So BookSource Classroom, in general, at its heart is an inventory tool. It is basically a light version of library software. So this is actually created for uh, classroom libraries and it's even used by some schools for their entire school libraries or other uses such as that. So as it says here on the homepage, you can inventory your books, you can manage your books, and you can analyze your classroom library. The analysis is a big feature of this tool. So if I scroll down to the homepage, again, it's going to give you some simple information. Um, you can easily scan barcodes to add books into your library. You can add them in via Excel. You can add them in via a book source invoice. And you can actually keep track of all your books, including all the copies of your books. Now, there's also a simple student checkout. Your students can log in anywhere, and they can actually look at all the physical books you have in your library, and they can check out those books. Now, you can put all sorts of limitations on how you want to manage your classroom. So, do you want to manage overdue books? How many books can they have out at once? Um, how long until they become overdue? Uh, all sorts of things like that. You can also manage the condition of the books. Um, you can manage the location of the books. You can manage uh, genres of books, all sorts of different things. Now, we also have an automatic diversity audit, and I know you can't really see it here, so I really want to encourage you to go to uh, the video that we have about Library Lens and the entire playlist about Library Lens because this is a huge feature of BookSource Classroom. We can actually look at your entire library of books and we can tell you if it's diversive and inclusive. We can also tell you how your reading levels break down in a bar chart or, or, and see how good your, uh, uh, your bell curve is on your reading levels. All sorts of different things. And we also have some powerful student reading insights. So you can actually see uh, in this chart, it's a little bit hard to explain in short, but the larger the circle, that means the more books the student read at that level. And on the axis here, it's actually going to show different levels. And on the axis here, this is months. So you can actually see exactly what students are reading over time and what their activity is. You can use that to uh, cause little interventions with the students or just pat them on the back for doing a good job. You can see if they're reading at all or, or reading uh, at too low of a level and they need to challenge themselves. All sorts of different things. And again, we have a video about that uh, in this channel. So I also want to highlight that BookSource Classroom is entirely free. I'm not kidding. This is entirely free. There are no paid features. There are no hidden upgrades. This is an entirely free piece of software, and it's very powerful software at that. So whenever you sign up, there's no free trial or anything. It's just a completely free account. And I'm going to tell you why. And if we get down here and we look at about BookSource, this is going to give you a little bit of information. BookSource, we've been in business for over 45 years. We sell specifically to educators. We specialize in selling classroom libraries and custom collections of books. We can basically compile a list of any books based on uh, even the most rudimentary specifications that you can give us. And we really do care about teachers. And so from the top down, from the CEO down, and from the owners down, the only reason this software is free is because we care about teachers and teachers love using it and it makes your job easier. So we're all about helping out educators and that's why, again, BookSource Classroom is entirely free. So it's easy to create an account. We have a video about that, but I'm going to go ahead and sign in and just show you a few of the cool features that we have. So you'll notice here that it asked me if I'm a teacher or a student. Well, I'm not going to show you the student view exactly because we have a video that goes over student uh, functionality, but this is where students go to actually check out books from your library and they can also return books online too. You can use this with remote students or you can use it for students that are actually in your classroom. I'm going to show you the teacher area. So we have a second password that's going to prevent the students from getting to your admin area and I'm going to put that in now. Alright, so on this dashboard we can see all this information. We can see how many books are overdue, what's checked out, how many students have books. We can also see how many books we have, how many copies we have, and how many students we have. This is a demo account, so this is not real information from a real classroom, so please forgive the fact that I have six students. I am not a, uh, I am not a teacher, and I'm especially not a lucky enough teacher to only have six students. So we also have Analyze with Library Lens, and Library Lens, we have an entire video series about it, but 
this is a very powerful tool that will actually look at your library, identify the gaps in your library, and then recommend um, ways to fill those gaps with the perfect books that are already leveled and for your classroom that you don't already have. It's books that we know your students are going to like to read. We have a diversity audit, which is going to see, again, if your library is diverse and inclusive, and if you have a good, well-rounded classroom library. We have a reading level audit with some really unique charts that are going to show you exactly how your reading levels break down. You can use guided reading, Lexile, you can use AR, and we even have a report that's going to tell you if you need to replace your damaged books or not, and that's in case you're managing your, um, your conditions of books. Now if you scroll down, our collection development team, we will actually recommend collections to you and your classroom, and so these would be great collections to add. Usually these are relating to um, the current environment and the current um, uh, social issues that are being faced in the world, current events, that sort of a thing. And so if you don't know about our collection development team, we have a video about that as well. Like I said, we have a video about just about everything here. Um, and after that, we have some areas for you to leave feedback to us and for you to actually control what we end up working on. Um, our development team is a little bit unique in that we let you ask for new features and then we let all of the users of Bookstore's Classroom vote those features up. And depending on how many votes they get and what the comments are, we'll actually put those on the roadmap and we will start working on them. So you actually get to control some of the development of this product. We really do listen to all of our users. Now if I go to the library page here, this is where you're going to add all your books. It's where you're going to manage all your books. Um, you can see all your books that you have here. Okay, and so I can go ahead and I can say, well, this book, since it has this little one here, it's checked out. I can go ahead and return that book right here. Okay, there's three days left for Lily on this book. I can either renew it or I can return it. If there are many copies, I can return all of them. I can also have a really powerful search here where I search for things by just about anything. Okay, we have a video about this too, so I'm not going to go into it in detail. I can click and see who's got books checked out. I can see exactly what's overdue, and right now I don't have any overdue books, so good for me. I can also sort these, and one popular day would be by popularity, so I can see exactly which books are popular in my classroom. I can import from Excel in case you're coming from another system, or you can import from a BookSource invoice in case you buy from BookSource. By far the easiest way to get started, by the way, is to import a BookSource invoice. Um, you can just type in your account number, and you can find uh, the order that you want to import, and then choose all the books out of there that you want to import. It doesn't matter if it's a huge order and you only have a part of it, you can easily go and find the collection that was uh, assigned to you, and then you can add that collection. And of course, another way to add books is via this Add Books page. I can type in ISBNs, I can scan ISBNs, and this is a really cool feature. I can actually use my camera of this device to scan in books, and I'm going to go ahead and show you that right now. So scan with camera, all right, there we go. That's all it took, and now I've scanned this book in into my library. So that's all it really takes, and then it automatically imports all this information in here as long as this is a BookSource verified book. You can also set a location so that you can scan in entire sections of books at one time because you probably already have them arranged in your classroom somehow. Now I can go to the student area, I can easily add students, I can delete students, I can group them, I can add as many groups as I want for the students. Um, I can also go ahead and click on a student, and this will actually show me the student progress over time. Now this isn't as impressive as the uh, the chart that's on the home page because this, because this is a demo account, but this is very powerful for uh, parent-teacher conferences. I'm using guided reading level right now, but let's go ahead and look at Lexile, and you can tell what I'm looking at here on the dates. So there we go. Okay, we're up 0.5 levels right now. So you can see this student has read one book at 700 one at 600 one here. And if they read two, this bubble would get even bigger around. And so you can actually see the trend line that happens here, and you can show parents exactly what the students are reading. So in addition to that, we have recommended books for students. So we actually use their favorite books or subjects based on what they've been reading, and then we recommend things to them. So this is a book the student hasn't read yet, but it would be a great fit for them. It's a picture book, it's family relationships, books and reading, and it's pets. Those are all in the top 10 list of subjects this student is interested in. And this is not a small list of subjects, by the way. Um, we have over 600 subjects that we handpick and assign to different books. So 
we have some really powerful recommendations you can make here. And so if a student comes up to you and says, I don't know what to read, guess what? It's not a problem anymore. You can log in and find the right book for them. You can see everything they are reading now. You can see all the reviews they've left, uh, their entire reading history, and you can even see the whole profile of the student. We don't ask for any personal identifiable information because we don't want it. We want to make sure that this is a secure platform. So you just put in the first name, last initial, we generate a username, and that's all there is to it. Now, Library Lens, super cool. Library Lens will actually analyze your entire library, and like we said, it will help identify gaps, and it will recommend additions to build the most robust classroom library that you can. So in this case, we have achievements, which are things I'm doing really well. We also have suggestions, which are, I mean, this isn't going to make it break my classroom library, but if you're going to expand, it might be good to add some. I've only got four books featuring physical disabilities. I should probably add one more. And then I have issues. These are major things. So I need to add 105 more books about math because only 1% of the titles in my library, and I have almost 1,000 titles, are about math. And we think that's a pretty big deal. So this is a good way for you to actually expand your library. If I were to click on this, it's going to show all of the books that would be a great fit for my library that I don't already have. So you can see, not only do we try to get that category that we're recommending, but we try to give you the best bang for the buck. And so we've got other categories here that also need to be filled in your library. And if you ever have a question about this, if I scroll all the way down here, we have a accounts manager team, a literacy accounts manager team that you can call or email anytime completely free. And they will build the perfect list of books for you um, based on anything that you want. I can look at reading level and I can see exactly how my reading levels break down based on guided reading or Lexile or AR. I can see how my bell curve works as far as below level, on level, above level, and then out of range. All sorts of different options there. On the reports tab, there's all sorts of reports I can look at. Student checkout detail, history by different levels. I can look at book distribution by different levels. Um, I can look at what overdue books, current books that are checked out, all sorts of different options. We have a settings page that lets you change just about everything. And I always kind of tell people that almost everything in Books of Classroom is toggleable. Well, let me show you what I'm talking about. There's a toggle for just about everything here. Um, I'm not going to go into all this because we have a video about it, but you can toggle all of these things on and off to totally customize your experience with Books of Classroom. And talking about ex uh, customizing the experience, I also want to show you that we have a really cool feature that lets you do auto quarantine for books. So you can take books that have been checked out and checked back in, and as soon as they're checked back in, whether you scan it or the student checks it in, it'll move it over to quarantine if you have this enabled in your account. And again, totally free feature. It's up to you if you want to enable it or not. It's not a paid feature or anything. And then after this quarantine runs out in five days or however long you set it, it'll move it over to put back, and it'll tell you, hey, you need to put this back on the shelf before we actually show it to students. So now if I were to click on that student tab, what would it look like? Well, it would look like this. I can also get to the student tab from up there in the upper right, and I can say, uh, well, let's just choose group A. I want to choose Lauren. Okay, I want to check out and read. All right, so I can either search for books, I could type in an ISBN, I could scan an ISBN if I wanted to, all sorts of different ways of finding books. But let's say that I want to check out A Dream of Life. Okay, I can check that out. I can manage condition. This is totally optional. But let's say I want to check out another book. Okay. You can determine how many books students can have out at one time. I can flip this book over and I can read about what information is here. And you can change what information shows up here. So you can say, uh, I want to show the annotation, for instance, which I would highly recommend. It lets the student read what that book's about. Um, you can hide the leveling if you want to. All sorts of different options you have here. Well, let me go ahead and check this book out. Great. And I'm going to say, um, it's good. Check out now. And I'm done. All right, so let's say that Lauren wants to return some books. She just logs in, goes to Lauren M, return books. Here's all the books she has out, and I want to say, well, I want to return this uh, National Parks book. So again, the teacher can do this on the student's behalf, or they can do it themselves. Um, well, it's bad condition now. I accidentally dropped it and bent some pages. Submit the return, and there you go. And now you, as the teacher, know exactly who's responsible for what books and um, exactly what they have. You have the option in your library too of exporting to Excel, making big sweeping changes. You can do bulk changes, all sorts of different options in Books with Classroom. So that's the quick overview. Please stay tuned and please check into more videos because we have a video about just about every feature here in depth. And we also, if I log back in, I'm gonna show you how to get to our Help Center. Again, we want to prevent those students from accidentally getting to your admin area. And 
the help center is just right down here. Um, Books of Classroom also works on mobile devices, so you can use your phone, you can use your tablet, you can use anything to access this website, and you will have all the functionality of this full desktop version on that mobile website. So thanks again for taking the time to learn more about Books of Classroom. I hope you keep watching more videos, and be sure to check them out, because we have a lot of them in this channel. Thanks.